Good afternoon, my YouTube friends and family. It's Len on the Matthew 419 channel. How have you all been? I haven't been terribly active here on my YouTube account as of late because of the whole Bible Thumping Wingnut podcast and uh, that project and everything. But I wanted to make a video because I want to survey um, my atheist friends. And, and what I'm asking is for a video response that you can either leave in comments or you can tweet at me at Precept Preacher if you're on Twitter. Um, share it with me on Google Plus if you like. Um, but I really want to know from um, the atheists that I interact here, and there's some specifically I have in mind. Um, I want to know your guys' thoughts on hell. And specifically, um, I kind of wrote, I, let me let me look, because I kind of wrote down my questions here, because I want them to be formed in a specific way here. So I'm just wondering, if hell wasn't eternal conscious torment, but rather a final death penalty for your sin, does that make the gospel more appealing? And would you be more more likely to accept the existence of God, and of course, specifically the Christian God, Yahweh, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Your question relates to a personal experience for me. When I was 12 years old and I read the Bible for the first time, I didn't get very far into it before I threw it across the room in disgust. Uh, I was always told that God is love and that the uh, Bible is God's word, and were I to read it, then I would find divine wisdom therein. Of course, anyone who's ever cracked open the Bible knows that it's full of the worst that stupid, prejudiced, reactionary primitives can be. Everything the Bible says about the nature of the world in relation to the rest of the universe is wrong, and everything it promotes is the opposite of what we should expect from any sort of transcendent, caring being who knows anything at all. I didn't yet know that it was possible to question God's existence, because I was always heard that that uh, the existence of God is a conclusively proven scientific fact. And that's just one of the many lies I was told while growing up. So I offered a prayer. I looked at some empty space where the walls met the ceiling and pretended that God would be there when I was talking to him, and I offered an ultimatum. I demanded that God either explain his, or justify his inexcusable atrocities attributed to him in the Bible, or he should excuse himself from them and let me know how the authors and editors of Scripture got him all wrong, and that if he did neither, if he really was the horrible, monstrous idiot that the Bible makes him out to be, then he could not have my soul. I believed in hell at that time, and I thought I was damning myself, but I felt that I had to stand on principle. Why would I want to spend eternity with a despicable despot? I'd be better off in hell, and I'd be even better off dead. So I remember asking at the end, can't I just die in both body and soul, die forever like everything else, just like you're supposed to? Because think about it, any form of eternal afterlife would be an inescapable hell eventually, and if the Bible really said, believe me or go to hell, then that would be a pretty strong indication that God is not real. It's the stick and the carrot being played out in two extremes. Believers get the impossible promise of unimaginable rewards that don't have to be paid until after you die, while believers, or excuse me, unbelievers, are threatened with a fate worse than death. And clearly, these are not the mandates of any entity that really exists. These are the demands of manipulative and domineering pretenders trying to make believe. In a sense, I can honestly say that my prayer was answered. Now I know that the Bible was written by ignorant, bigoted, superstitious savages pretending to speak for God in order to justify their inhumanity against their neighbors. Many of you have read the Bible, and I'm wondering, in your reading of Scripture, does it seem likely that hell is anything other than eternal conscious torment for the unsaved? In other words, do you find that hell is any like, is it even possible that hell is anything other than eternal conscious torment? And just a natural reading of the Scripture, do you see it being something else, such as annihilation, as a more universalism or anything like that? Now I know that the Bible doesn't describe hell the way that most Christians interpret it. The Christian perspective on hell actually comes from Dante's Inferno. There's supposed to be a lake of fire in Revelation, but that's not the same thing as hell. Likewise, Jesus is depicted as stomping on unbelievers in a bloody wine press, because that's what you would expect a loving God of infinite wisdom and mercy to do, right? But then, that's not the eternal damnation that believers talk about either. Even if there was a Jesus, and we're supposed to believe that the Gospels were his words, and that Revelations and Timothy, at least, 
were written by someone else pretending to speak for Jesus. The Old Testament talks about Sheol, the underworld of the dead, which is essentially the same as the Greek and Sumerian Hades. It's where everyone goes when they die, regardless of their deeds in life. There is no posthumous judgment or punishment for good or evil. That idea is adapted from Zoroastrians, but was not yet part of Hebrew mythology, or theology rather. When you die, you just die. The wages of sin is death. Belief in Jesus was supposed to bring everlasting life, so it comes down to whether you rot or not. The Bible does not imply any sort of eternal damnation such as most Abrahamic theists believe in today. So, in other words, if if hell was a final death sentence, okay, um, and that's it, you cease to exist, it's not in, an eternal conscious torment, do you find that the gospel is more palatable? I guess is what I'm asking. Um, would it give you um, further consideration? Or more importantly, is hell even part of the equation? The idea of hell is irrelevant. The most objectionable aspect of Abrahamic religion for me is the requirement of faith. It's a belief system with required beliefs and prohibited beliefs, as opposed to free thought. It's not about morality. It doesn't matter how bad you are. All sins can be forgiven if you but believe, but if you don't believe, then it doesn't matter how good you are, because the only sin that cannot be forgiven is the sin of disbelief. And don't you think it's a contradiction that God can do anything he wants, but he can't forgive anyone who blasphemes the Holy Spirit? And you're supposed to swallow all of this on faith, so gullibility is the sole criteria for redemption. Obviously, this was all made up by people who had no evidence to back up their lies. All that matters is that you make believe because then you'll pay your tithe and submit to all manner of coercion. Religion is a means to manipulate the masses. The Gospels couldn't possibly have any appeal, but that doesn't matter, because I don't believe things on faith, so it doesn't matter if I want to believe it or not. I'm compelled to consider whatever the evidence indicates, regardless whether it appeals to me. So the biggest failure the Gospels have, like the rest of the Bible, is that there's no truth in it. Not one thing that we can show to be true. Plus, religion makes a hell of a lot of claims that we can prove are not true. So there's an awful lot wrong with it, and nothing right with it. It's all about pretending to know things you don't really know, and then refusing to be reasoned with, and too often it's used to justify hatred and criminality. Now you asked me about Christianity specifically. And not only is it senseless both in theology and philosophy, it's full of contradictions as well, but it also offers nothing for the betterment of humanity. All we have are weirdly contrived and misinterpreted prophecies, which even if they were true, they still wouldn't lend credence to the fable or anything connected with it. Back to the Future got some things right, too, and it's more believable. Jesus is depicted as a cult leader and faith healer, no different than the fraudulent televangelists today. He didn't know basic truths that were known by other men of his time. He thought that the world was flat and haunted by demons. He told us not to wash our hands because it's not what goes into your mouth that makes you sick, but what comes out. This is the guy I'm supposed to revere as a savior? A savior from what again? Let me in. Why? So I can save you. From what? From what I'm going to do if you don't let me in. So it seems that this is an accurate depiction of Christianity, which is why I have to wonder how anyone could believe this, much less imagine it to be wise or in any way positive or admirable. How could you worship something that isn't even worthy of respect? How could anyone believe such nonsense? So God can, so God has conditions for his unconditional love. He punished us for what he should have praised us for, and he can't forgive us until we do something unforgivable first. And then he'll only entrust the most important information we could have to be, post, to be passed around by the most corruptible method among the least credible sources imaginable. And we're supposed to believe all of this for literally no reason at all, because there's no evidence to support it. There are many reasons to call bullshit, but not one reason to believe it, and no option that I could believe it. I thank you for your question. I hope I've answered it.